<laughs> no way. Morning, folks. Today, something a bit different. There's always something a bit different here, isn't it? That's why we called it Hodgepodge Farm. Anyway, today we've got Leica coming. Leica are a big company, you might have heard of them. And they cross all sorts of industries, but they also are responsible for all that really fancy gear that Duncan used when he scanned the whole farm. They picked up on that, asked if they could come and do a bit of filming for a case study. I don't know how much filming we'll do. We'll probably leave them to do their stuff, but I might get a little bit of behind the scenes because they're gonna bring some even more fancy kit, which might let us see underground and see what's really down there because we know there's an awful lot of backfill around the farm. It's been one of those mornings, forgot my phone, it's at the cottage. Luckily I flagged Joe down on the main road on the school run. She's gonna go pick it up and bring it here. So hopefully the guys aren't lost. First job I'm gonna try and get done before they get here, give the birds some light. Currently at the end of the stable, has a tiny little broken window. But all the doors are solid and there's no roof lights. So I'm thinking just propping this open in a jar each day and lashing some sheep hurdles. Well, I don't think it can go anywhere. And it's not windy today. That can be a weekend job. At least they got more light in there. More light means more eggs. So, basically, Last time, obviously, we put the um, bag on top of the cable yeah. and induced the signal into it. And we can either now clip that bag onto here and put a signal into, into the wire, uh, okay. or there's a sonde in the end there that we can, again, it generates a signal, and then we can locate either one of those. So, so you, you can locate just the end. Just the end, yeah. So you know how. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know where, you, like, how far. So if you had going. a blockage, you could send that, and when it stops, you'd know. Yeah, yeah. in theory, yeah. No. Sludge. Gully over there will probably be into this one. And then the question there, is, where out that way? So you've got one, two, three, four. Yeah. So that's obviously where everything's going. Yeah. We'll start by just putting this signal into the uh, wire. Shove it. Well, see where it goes. Yeah, and, and at the top, I mean, it's blocked that bit, but I think from there down should be. There's a down pipe at the top as well, is there? Um, no, there's like a, the, the yard drains into a drain, which is blocked up there, but that should come down here somewhere. Right. And that must tee that into, tees it. into it. it, and then it all goes off. So I think that one is running frying, but this one is blocked somewhere. Is it liquid or? No, it's powder, like a dust. But that goes green. Yeah, you can yeah, see it's yeah. gone. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Green there. And then if you give it 10 minutes, it'll um, give enough water. So the guys have just put some magic powder down in the pipe. We know that that drainage from the barn comes down to the brook. And I've been told that from the previous owner, but I have no idea where it comes out. So that clay pipe should glow green all the way down here and it is safe for the environment so we haven't just uh, turned the whole of the seven astri green well, i can't see anything down there
Oh wait, maybe I can. No way. Can you see it? That's mental. Yeah. So actually if we go down through here, I can see it seeping up there. So that is obviously where the drain comes to. That is super simple, but very clever. And I think you can buy it a screw peg, supposedly. And yes, you probably could do some good pranks with that stuff. So now we've done all the utility stuff outside, I did ask a favour to see if we could see what was going on inside the stone barn. Because we know over the years that we have seen the floor in here back filled up, hence why this full height door is only a metre high now. So it shows us a, a change in subsurface ground conditions. Um, you can see quite clearly on that one there as we've gone along. And then from this point here, we've got a change in ground conditions completely there. Yeah. You see it drops down. I mean, the, the floor level we can see down at, um, that's approximately down at half a metre or so um, to the bottom of the slab. The bottom of the slab is probably 0.2. Three, um, and then we've got a definitive line there with a change in, in grain conditions from that point onwards. I'll collect some more. Yeah. Any update? No. Okay. <laughs> it's been a pain. I'm just trying to use the sodden now on the end of this and I'm just double checking the frequency on it. But we get about four metres and then it gets stuck. Okay, which is. That'll be a sounding. It's got to be a T there, isn't it? Having found out that we have the pipe going all the way to the brook, we're just trying to work out where these downpipes come down and across they probably tee into it we know we've got a blockage up top like we saw last week when i was trying to dig out that ditch but somewhere along here there must be a drainage pipe and some tees joining into it well there we go we now have seen through the ground i'll wait to see the results because what shane did with the giant push along ground penetrating radar system all that detail will go away and be processed to map out what's been found underground in summary though now we know where all the drainage runs across the yard under the yard 
to where all the soak away system is or was and also a couple of the water supplies that come into the property where those are located. These are things that will not show up on any form of survey map and as much as you can say that you should try and find out all these things before purchase, in reality we knew where all the main supplies were of course and all the normal searches were done but when you've got multiple generations of additions to a farm in this case there are drainage gullies here and there's going to be um, different bits that have been put in between buildings over the years none of, none of that is mapped so we've got a good understanding of where things are now in reality could we have survived without going to the extent of getting all these surveys done of course we could and today's was just a case study on the behalf of Leica and Neon surveys it was actually nothing to do with us they just said could we host it at our site because they'd seen the videos that we did with Neon before they reached out and said could we use it as a, an example of a domestic or heritage property because a lot of their case studies tend to be big commercial projects so there was they weren't paying us we weren't paying them it was just a come and do what you want to do type thing and i just brought the camera along to share it with you guys they're going to do a case study in the future and i'm sure we can link to that when it's done of course it's an extravagant bit of kit to use for a single project but you're not going to be buying one of these yourself you're going to be finding someone to come and survey a site and if there are utilities there if there are unknown voids under a concrete slab for instance in that big barn we know that there's built up ground there it turns out now that there's about 800 millimeters of um, disturbed land or, or um, build up above what probably is the original floor level over the whole thing and then it drops again down the bottom end so there's a little bit of discovery work to be doing still but there is a solid patch 800 millimeters down in the whole barn could that be a big flagstone floor from the 1700s we will wait and see but anyway thanks for watching remember if you can do it yourself and we'll see you next time